Saskatoon's taxi industry continues to evolve, and among those many changes, we have uh, Carlo Triolo uh, leading some of them with the United Group. I've invited Carlo to come today and give us a little bit of a background on the taxi industry. Carlo, thanks for making time. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your role, both not just with uh, the United Group as a general manager, but you're also involved uh, in some other broader industry uh, types of roles. Yeah, last year we formed a uh, provincial association called the STCA. So it's primarily made up of uh, members in the vehicle for hire industry. And what you're seeing in, in the taxi industry in Saskatoon, not a lot of people know about. So something like an app that uh, is available now. And, and can you share with us some of the changes that are on the horizon? Yeah, so the taxi industry in Saskatoon has an app that works much like your TNC companies such as Uber, uh, offers all the same features and that's been up and running and active in this city for going on four plus years now. So a TNC would be defined as? A transportation network company is the term used today. To cover off a company like Uber. Yeah. Uh, what are you experiencing uh, in Saskatoon, we've we've had some good dialogue in the city, and and uh, United Group has been at the forefront for years. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, pressure on City Council, which ultimately issues the licenses for the taxis. Do you see that there's a, a need to continue to grow that the number of cabs that are available? And yeah, so, I mean, most industries operate on a supply and demand basis, and uh, in the taxi industry, there's bylaws and regulations, and one of the bylaw and regulations is on the number of cars allowed on the street um, or permits issued. And um, in order to meet that supply and demand, we need the ability to flex and put more cars on when the demand requests it. Um, today, the taxi industry doesn't have that ability. How many taxis would there be in the city right now? Um, there's 165 permanent plates, and then uh, including temporary plates, there's 210 in total. And what would a temporary plate allow a company to do? Um, so the accessible plates uh, are temporary, owned by the city of Saskatoon and the seasonal plates that operate 10 months of the year are um, for three years, 10 months each year, are owned by the city of Saskatoon as well. So am I as a customer able to uh, utilize the app much as you would with the TNC and get any of the cabs to pick me up at a location uh, like we're familiar with in some other cities? Absolutely. So what is it that is, uh, is a challenge for the industry and, and council's been talking about uh, the need, uh, the, the supply and demand just cannot, in my mind, simply be met with uh, 15,000 fans at a rush game getting out at the same time, you know, a number of those on buses. How would you plan to, to accommodate the need when we have so many events happening and all the bars close at the same time and venues close with thousands of people coming out? So through the STCA, we've come up with a proposal that we've been advocating for uh, for a year now to provincial and municipal government, uh, and we call it a flex service. And so it's a hybrid made in Saskatchewan solution, taking the best of a, what a TNC uh, has to offer and what the taxis have to offer. Um, and it essentially is allowing people to use their private cars to provide transportation on a supply and demand basis. So it's data driven, there's par parameters set in place uh, and that data dictates when and if there's extra cars required. So there's no excess um, and the extra cars required are on the road when they need to be. I can imagine uh, if, if I was a, a taxi franchise owner or had a, a plate uh, that I'd want to have some assurance that I would be busy and generating uh, some income. Uh, so in, in cold weather, for example, you'd probably be at a more peak demand? Yeah, there weather conditions for sure, uh, local events in the city, um, and then cal specific calendar dates always create peaks of demand in service. Uh, and those are the times where the, um, the industry might need extra vehicles, uh, possibly, not all the time. And then 
there's the downtimes. There's definitely a, a large percentage of times during a day, weekdays, even weekends, where taxis will sit idle for hours. Um, and that's why the open floodgate to a TNC type service doesn't work. It adds congestion, it adds excess, and it uh, limits the amount of revenue or income a driver can make. With the flex service option, the extra cars are only hitting the road when the taxis can't keep up, so they're not losing any income. So in, in the event of uh, a concert or, or uh, a rush game, I keep using that example because it's fairly consistently full at Sastel Centre, uh, when you have thousands of people coming out, I guess there's the ability to predict and have more cars available for that event. Uh, in addition to some other events that might be happening around the city, uh, if it's at Prairieland Park, two different ends of the city and things like that, would would those people be employed under this flex model that you're proposing, that uh, they would be at home and they'd know that the game is tonight, so off I go in my car and I'm busy? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, a person that would make application to the city or the province for a flex to use their car, um, they would meet the necessary requirements for insurance and safety and those types of things. And um, they would then find themselves a dispatch broker to uh, affiliate themselves with. And uh, in a perfect world, they would uh, know up front, both the broker and the uh, individual, what days and times they might be available. The um, historical data would tell us in a roundabout way what those demands might be. So we can predict it to a certain degree and that information can be sent out in advance to the people that might be available on those days and times and they can log into a system and work as the request comes about. If we look at the Saskatoon Airport as an example, I mean, we continually hear about, you know, I, I arrived and there's, there's no cabs, but when you have you know, two WestJet flights and an Air Canada flight and so on, and, and there's 600 people. I don't think it's reasonable to expect that there'd be 200 cabs even waiting just at the airport. Uh, we talk about a level playing field, so you want to be able to compete uh, with a TNC or in the taxi industry as a whole. How, how does that work and what does that mean, a level playing field? Um. With the city bylaws, there's certain things that are mandated and then provincially as well. So we're talking about liability insurance, which is in the better interest of the public safety. We're talking about cameras, which have been implemented over the years. That's in the better interest of the operator as well as public safety. Um, and we're talking about a certain level of license required uh, and, and training sensitivity training, uh, accessible transportation training, those types of things. How did that come to be in Saskatoon then with uh, the regulations and so on that has evolved over a number of years I'd imagine? Yeah, it has evolved over many years and developed um, not just one writing, it's, it's had several writings to the bylaws to where they are today and I like to think that they exist through collaboration between uh, operators, brokers and uh, city policy makers um, and in most cases the things come about in the better interest of public safety and standards. I've heard it said that when business competes the consumer wins and I, I think that's a, a true thing here uh, with what you've indicated. If, if we look at the cost of getting into a taxi today some people would say well it's, it's just too high. Uh, how, how do you respond to that? Well, I, I mean, somebody could say the cost too high to get into any business. A person makes their decision to invest into a business. Um, and when they make that decision, they know the cost up front. Uh, the taxi business, each car is uh, individually owned and operated. Um, they're not owned by the broker. Uh, so we, in the city of Saskatoon, there are over 100 individual entrepreneurs operating those taxis. The brokers simply offer a dispatch and accounting service. Each of those individuals, whether they lease that business and own the car um, or own and operate both the franchise and the car, have made a decision to invest in. If I make a decision to spend a million dollars on a Tim Hortons franchise, I know that cost associated up front. The taxi industry really is no different. 
And there's no guarantee of a set number of people needing transportation tomorrow or Saturday or uh, so it's only something you can look back on and say the data shows. Uh, so it's unpredictable in, in that sense. Uh, yes. What would you say to uh, the, the TNCs, uh, the level of, of competition? Well, they do it in other cities, but I have been to other cities where legislation has prevented them. Uh, to maintain a strong competitive taxi industry. Uh, are, there, are the TNCs necessarily the way of the future or is it just an evolving hybrid model of what you're proposing with the flex type of uh, transportation network that you have coming? I believe the flex service model uh, takes into consideration um, both what the TNC is proposing they offer and what the taxi industry has always offered. We have to keep in mind that a taxi service is 24-7, all walks of life. They accept all forms of payment. They offer uh, a mandated accessible service as a percentage of vehicles on the road. Um, they take cash, debit, credit card, uh, and offer accounts to be um, set up as well. Uh, in a TNC world, it's for the more affluent only. If you don't have a smartphone with app capability and you don't have a credit card you can put on file, you don't have access to that transportation. And if the transportation industry resorts to only that being available, we'll have less service. Today it's an addition uh, and it's an open floodgate, so there's an excess and everybody's happy because they're getting more than they need. But at the end of the day, we're eliminating income. We're creating a scenario where that livelihood is not sustainable. And for the most part, those TNCs offer subsidized services from venture capital funding. So the fares being offered are unsustainable as well. It has to change. And I think we're on the cusp of change, and I want to thank you and the organizations you're with to uh, have more success in the years to come. Uh, all in the name of uh, an improved transportation network. So thank you for making time and sharing that. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.